Okay, good morning, everyone. How are we doing today? Great day to be a dolphin. Well, I, I get to start, bat lead off, and set the bar really low for everybody else. So that's my job this morning. I'll do the best I can to get in and get out. But uh, President Lemur, Lemur will be joining us here momentarily, but we wanted to get the program started. So uh, again, my name is Bob Beretta. I'm the uh, Vice President of Athletics and Recreation. I get to do that. Uh, a pleasure and an honor to, to be at that position here at Lemoyne. But as I start my official remarks, I'd just like to welcome everyone. Welcome Mr. Hill, Dr. Ward, distinguished faculty members, faculty athletic affiliates, coaches, staff, and of course, our amazing scholar athletes. Good morning. <laughs> Thanks to everyone for joining us for this very special tribute. You know, this is one of my favorite events every year at the Heights, and I've been here just three years, but this is special. And it's special because it's so genuinely unique. It's an opportunity to celebrate excellence, the incredible academic achievements of our scholar athletes, but it's also a chance to recognize those most responsible for that brilliance, our remarkable faculty members. I'd like to take a moment to salute both groups at this time. Today we recognize our scholar athletes, those that have achieved at the highest level, both in the classroom and on the fields, tracks, courts, and pools of competition. And it's so incredible to see such a full room. In fact, of the approximate 275 non-freshman student athletes eligible for this honor, 83 individuals have reached this impressive milestone. Think about that for a second. Nearly a third of our student athletes here at Lemoyne with at least three semesters under their collective belts boasts a cumulative grade point average of at least 3.5. That's incredible. It's not like we're playing intramural sports here. There, I think we, we have quite a challenge ahead of us on the, on the athletic side and on the academic side. So that only is a greater tribute to you all. What a testament to your drive for excellence and what a statement about the support system and faculty we have here at Lemoyne that makes it all possible. To our wonderful scholar athletes, I am incredibly proud of your passion and determination to achieve at the highest level in all that you do, athletically and academically. And to the faculty, I'm immensely grateful for your commitment to our mission in helping our scholar athletes flourish as they strive for comprehensive excellence. Thank you all so very much. Good morning. For, the, for those of you who don't know me, <clears throat> my name is Hayden Roberts and I'm a senior on the women's basketball team as well as the president of the Student Athlete Advisory Committee. It is an honor for me to stand here and welcome you to the 17th Annual Scholar Athlete and Faculty Recognition Breakfast. I want to begin by acknowledging some very important individuals and groups in attendance this morning. First, I would like to welcome our keynote speaker, Walter Hill. Thank you for being here today and we look forward to hearing from you this morning. We would also like to recognize members of the college's leadership team, including President Lin Dr. Linda Lemura, Vice Presidents, Faculty and Administrative Staff that are in attendance today. These individuals represent the senior management at Lemoyne and are such an invaluable to the operation of our institution. We appreciate all of you taking the time out of your busy schedules to attend this special event this morning. A special thanks to our athletic department, which is second to none in my opinion, headed by Assistant Vice President for Athletics, Bob Beretta. On behalf of all student athletes, I would also like to thank our coaches, sports medicine staff, sports information staff, and administrative staff. Our experience at Lemoyne wouldn't be nearly as special without all of you and all of the support each of you provide us with. Last, but certainly not least, a very special thanks to our faculty. We all personally thank you for the work you do each and every day, and we credit you with the motivation and inspiration we have as a group to succeed at the highest academic level. With that said, a very special thanks to our faculty athletic representative, Dr. Sean Ward, who works very closely with our student athletes and faculty to make sure all academic activity is seamless. For me, it is very special to be here with the 82 other student athletes who maintain a cumulative GPA of 3.5 or higher. This group of student athletes know how much organization, preparation, and studying it takes to attain a very high level of academic achievement. 
and this group of athletes knows how much conditioning, weight training, and practice goes into being an elite athlete in the Northeast Conference. For that reason, it has meant the world to me, despite the early hour, to attend this breakfast for the last three years and to stand among a remarkably unique group of people who understand the depth of hard work. In addition to your recognition today, you will each receive a certificate and a pin for your high level of accomplishments and the pride attained for your hard work. Now, I would like to welcome Liv Snell, a member of the cross country and track team for the invitation. Let us pray. God has created this day for gain, not loss, success, not failure, positive action, not negative thought. Lord, inspire us with the desire for greatness to wisely use the gifts and talents you have so generously given us. They are tools to be used, not treasures to be stored. Create in these athletes the right attitude to excel in the classroom and in life, the attitude that says, I can reach deeper inside myself. The firm belief in God, themselves, their families, and their teammates to have great expectations for the future. The enduring commitment to persevere, to never quit, no matter the odds. Amen. Thank you, Liv. At this time, we will have our breakfast. We would like to thank Anna Brown and Deneen Mecca with Airmark for providing us with this breakfast. If you would please wait at your table, a member of the staff will be over to send you to the buffet. it up. Are we good? Okay. All right. We're delighted to have Walter Hill here with us today. After graduating from Gonzaga High School in 1983, where he was a two-year starter on the basketball team under coach Dick Myers, a 1964 graduate of LeMoyne College, he enrolled at LeMoyne in the fall of 1983. He was a four-year member of the men's basketball team under coach John Beeline and graduated in 1987 with a BS in accounting. During his time on the Heights, he appeared in 109 games as the Dolphins went 73-43 and 43, and he dished out 351 assists, which at the time of his graduation ranked second in the program's history. Following two years working at KPMG, he returned to graduate, he returned to graduate school at University of Maryland and graduated in 1990 with a Master's of Business Administration in Finance and International Business. He began working for the Export-Import Bank of the United States in 1991. He left there in 1998 to work at the Fannie Mae as a director of Counterparty Risk. After working there for 10 years, he returned to the Export-Import Bank in 2008 as the Vice President of Credit Policy and Compliance. He spent a total of 23 years at Export-Import Bank and 10 years at Fannie Mae and recently left to become the Small Business Administration's first Chief Risk Officer in February of 2024. The Jesuit influence has made an impact in how Walter lives his life and he is very active in the DC community. Inspired by the work of Father Horace B. McKenna, the late Jesuit priest who devoted his life to service of the poor and homeless. 
Father McKenna helped found so others might eat, which provides a soup kitchen and a range of outreach for the homeless and poor in the nation's capital. Men and Women for Others is exemplified by Walter Hill. He is active in helping others transform their lives and served as a member on the Father McKenna Center Board of Directors, as well as a leader in Omega Sci Fi, a service fraternity of African American men. In his free time, Walter likes to ride his motorcycle. He has two sons, the oldest of which graduated from Champlain College and is a game design programmer living in Texas, and the younger son is graduating from Harvard this spring with a degree in economics. Here to discuss the importance of teamwork and team values and how they drive your success both on and off the field or court, it is my pleasure to welcome Mr. Walter Hill. Good morning. I'm sorry. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. All right. You just had a nice meal. You know, wake up. Uh, Hayden, you can be my PR person anytime. Thank you so much. And thank you, Liv, for those that uh, nice invocation. You guys said some things in your earlier remarks that, that I'll touch on. Uh, anybody from the uh, tennis program here? Okay. Um, I'm going to ask you a question. First of all, um, President Lemur hasn't arrived yet. I want to thank her, uh, thank the distinguished uh, administrators and the scholar athletes for being here, and thank you for inviting me. Uh, I have a question for the scholar athletes. I'm not going to ask this of the administrators because I know what their answer will be. And and by the way, you cannot possibly offend me. So. I need an honest answer. By a show of hands, how many of you think I'm old? <laughs> really? Okay, all right, that's good, that's good. Because you will soon be in my shoes. And you know, I have a little silly saying, uh, the older you get, the younger, older looks. So I asked about the um, tennis team because it, it, I'm old, right? Who has heard of Arthur Ashe? Okay, great, all the old people, right. So for those who haven't, Arthur Ashe was a tremendous uh, tennis player and a humanitarian. Uh, he was first African-American to win the NCAA uh, individual singles title. In 75, he won Wimbledon, U.S. Open, and I think the Australian Open. He was my commencement speaker in 1987 at Lemoyne. I cannot tell you a word that he said because I heard him, but I did not listen to him. Is there anyone in here who has a hearing impairment? Okay. So no one raised their hand. So everyone can hear me. My challenge to you is also to listen. I want to give you, hopefully, a few nuggets that you can use along your journey to become men and women for others. And I trust you have begun that journey to become men and women for others. And it's not just about you, but the impact you can make. So hearing versus listening. I trust you will do the, the latter. The, I'm going to reference some, some old people. Uh, does anyone know who Benjamin Hooks was? If you don't, Google him. He was a great American, made a great impact to this country. In 1999, I lost a dear friend of mine uh, who was a mentor to me. He was the, one of the best men in my, in my wedding, along with my blood brother. He passed away. He was eulogized by Benjamin Hooks in Memphis, Tennessee. And there were three things that Benjamin Hooks said that have always stuck with me. Don't give up. Press on. Keep on stepping. Don't give up. Press on, keep on stepping. Scholar athletes, say it with me. Don't give up. Scholar athletes, say it with me. 
Don't give up. Keep on pressing. Keep on stepping. These are words to live by. I want to congratulate you for being uh, honored today as scholar athlete. And I know you had an opportunity to uh, invite a professor who was impactful to you. And so I want to give, first of all, the professors that you invited. Could you raise your hand? Let's give them a round of applause. I, uh, my day was made a few minutes ago, because uh, if I could have invited somebody, he's here, Dan Arno. So again, congratulations on being the scholar athletes that you are. This is the last time I'm gonna talk about how great you are because I'm not here to talk about how great you are. I'm here to talk about how great you can be. I'm here to focus on leadership. You have the seniors, your cake is just about baked, right? You're about to graduate. You have been given the tools you need for success. Sophomores and juniors, you're still matriculating through. But all the tools you need for success, you have here. It's been my experience that athletics is a microcosm of life. It teaches you hard work. It teaches you teamwork. It teaches you how to follow. And it teaches you how to lead. My first uh, job, my first was going for my first management job, and one of the one of the um, things that was seeking was prior management experience. Well, I was trying to get management experience. I didn't have prior management experience until I started to think about it. I didn't have prior management experience in business, but I did in other aspects of life. I was a captain, two years here at Lemoyne, was a captain in high school, started mentoring programs, and I started thinking. And I packaged those experiences to show the leadership skills. Because at the end of the day, leadership is about people. And um, choose the better. The Jesuit education gets in the blood, and you can't shake it. It's like a bad cold. But it is foundational. Being a man or woman for others is not just a catchphrase. It really is what you ought to do and how you ought to lead your life. You know, what does it mean to be a man or woman for others? It doesn't mean to be a man or woman for those who look like you, those who share your sexual orientation, those who share your race, those who share your beliefs. It's about being a man or woman for others, for all the others. And it's easy to be um, associated and provide uplift for someone who you have an affinity with. The challenge is for someone you don't have an affinity with, how do you provide uplift for that individual, those individuals? Core personalis, care of the individual. Again, not just those individuals that you deem worthy, but for all individuals. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Remember, leadership is about people. Caring is about a work ethic. Again, you all are scholar athletes. You put work in, not only on the gridiron and, and on the basketball court, on the playing field, uh, but you put work in in your academics as well. And those are foundational. You know, I tell a story um, about my freshman year in high school. 
first of all, I, I played basketball in CYO, and I, I told my father, told my parents, you know, I want to play football. And my father said, okay, you can play football, but you only play one sport. That was his way of saying no, without, because he knew I would self-select basketball. And so I went off the freshman team, made the freshman team, but I, uh, I say now that I was the 15th man on a 14-man squad. I was so far down the bench, I had to take an Uber to get to the scorer's table. But that motivated me. That, that coach, God rest his soul, and I, I never had the opportunity to tell him this. I had a lot of hate in my heart for this gentleman because he never told me I couldn't play. But all of his actions said, you're not worthy, you won't be a player, you can't play. And every single day that motivated me to work, whether it was in the, in the gym, whether it was in the weight room, on the track. And I took that work ethic with me. Um, obviously, I was able to, uh, the guy that got me started playing basketball at three years old, three years, in the third grade, rather, I would have been bad if I was playing at three years old. He said, you know, if you're fortunate enough to get your college education paid for through basketball, you're way ahead of the game. And I never had that dream, but the guy I played for, Dick Myers, was actually a LeMoyne grad. And so he saw something in me, that work ethic, and I ended up at LeMoyne. So working is important. I've learned that there's a difference between losing and getting beat. To me, getting beat there's some, the, the team you're playing or the individual you're going against is just better than you on that given day. And it happens. You can't win all the time. But losing is something that you did or didn't do. You didn't prepare well enough. You took the, your opponent or your team lightly. And flash forward, out of the arena of sports, you didn't prepare for your presentation. You didn't prepare for the meeting. You didn't come to the meeting already having your answers in the room. I don't ever want to lose. I may get beat, but I am going to outwork my opponent, whether that opponent is real or fictional, uh, because it's about the work. And I would implore you to think about that same thing. How many of you have faced some adversity in your life? Okay. If you didn't raise your hand, God bless you, you will. And I would hope that you can hearken back on those three things that Benjamin Hook said. Don't give up. Press on. Keep on stepping. Again, words to live by. I'm old. So you, you may have never heard of this uh, gentleman, but he's been around for 60 years. Uh, great singer, still singing. Smokey Robinson, ever heard of him? So I was listening to him tell a story recently, and he said when he was a little kid, he uh, was sitting out on the stoop, and you know, he was, had his lips poked out, he was all sucked, sullen and sunken. And uh, his, his mother, he said his mother spoke in parables. She came out and said, what, what's wrong with you? He said, it's my friends. They don't want to play with me. They won't talk to me. She said to him, from the day you're born until the day you ride in a hearse, nothing could be so bad that it couldn't be worse. Again, when you face your adversity, understand tomorrow will come. But you have to work to make it so. So everyone has a birth date. Everyone has a death date. So John Doe, you see, you know, a, a tombstone. John Doe, born January 1st, 2003, died X date. And you see a dash in between. The dash is how you lived your life. The dash is what you do with your time, what impact you made. How are you going to create your dash? 
And what are you going to do with your badge? Who are you going to impact? If you haven't begun to think about the mark you want to leave, I encourage you to do so. We all can walk and chew gum at the same time. I know you're hard in your studies, you're hard at your craft, whatever your sport is. Uh, but to whom much is given, much is required. The Jesuit tenants that you hear, that you see all around campus, are not just lip service. They are a requirement for you to be in this life, to be in this world, to pay it forward. Think about how you will give of your time, your talent, and your treasures. My, uh, my father passed in 2013, and he lived his life in a way uh, that I admired. I can recall he, uh, he and my mother would come up to see me play when I was freshman and sophomore. You know, I didn't get much time. I had several DNPs. Anybody know what DNPs mean? Did not play. Uh, but they came. And so when he passed, we could, you know, there was a magnet we could, we could take with a saying. We could put it in the casket and keep it as a keepsake. It's in my kitchen now on the stove. And it says simply, may the work I have done speak for me. That's how he lived his life. I would encourage you to think about how you want to live your life. Leadership. Again, I've said to whom much is given, much is required. You have a responsibility for the gifts you've been given to pay it forward. Maximize your dash. What are they going to say about you when you leave? Nobody's going to talk about how much money you make. No one is going to talk about how many cars, how many homes you have. They're going to talk about the legacy you've left. Kids are a legacy. How you've treated institutions, how you've paid it forward. So as you, especially seniors, you're about to go off into the brave new world, whatever your field of, of uh, endeavor will be, as you build, as you go through your journey, think about the impact you want to have and the legacy you want to leave. Sophomores and juniors, it's never too soon to start thinking about that. Again, leadership is about thinking about the whole person. I don't know if you're familiar with, there's a metaphor, uh, if you see a picture of an iceberg, if you're on the water, you see an iceberg, you actually see about 20% of the iceberg. 80% of it is below the water. I use that analogy because when you are dealing with people, what you see in front of you is 20% of that person. They have challenges, they have issues, they have joys and pains just like you do. But everyone has a journey. Everyone's journey is different. Don't judge a book by its cover. I can recall, you know, in my playing days, we were, I forget who we were playing, but I'm we're warming up. I'm looking down the court at my opponent because we scouted him. And the guy had two left feet. I'm thinking I'm going to eat his lunch today. Just the opposite occurred. And uh, from that day forward, I, I said to myself, I cannot judge a book by the cover because he was a hard worker. And that day, I lost. I didn't get beat. I lost. And so, again, I'm bound to determine not to lose. So I want to also share with you, there's a theme, a concept called intrusive leadership. You should have a book in front of you, which is my gift to you. It's about thinking about the people that you lead. Again, what you see, what they bring to work, what they bring to the committee, what they bring to the team is 20%. Or what you see is 20% of who they are. They bring them whole, their whole selves to that endeavor. All of their issues, all of their challenges. And so intrusive leadership is about trying to understand some of those things, to be empathetic about those things. 
and you would be amazed. As you show empathy, you get more productivity, you get better relationships, and you receive empathy back. So I would encourage you to read that piece. It's a short read, um, but I know you can do it. You are scholar athletes, by the way. And this is the 17th uh, annual event. So this, this wasn't here when I was in school. I, not that I would be here if it were. Um, but, and that's the other thing. Again, congrats on the three, five, and above. You know, you kind of heard some of the, the, the comments about my sons, and I tell them all the time. When you walk outside, you don't wear your GPA on your forehead. You don't wear the school you went to or go to on your forehead. People will see you how you present yourself. So your grades, your school, that's what you do. That's not who you are. Help people understand who you are. And who you are, it doesn't matter whether you're a 4.0 student or 2.5 student. Everyone has value and everyone contributes to a team. Baseball coach, I'm quite sure you have some home run hitters, you have some utility hitters, you have some guys that can't hit very well, but they're great outfielders. Everyone has a role on a team. Intrusive leadership begins to think about the skills, not just on the surface, but below the surface. And so again, my challenge to you is to think about how you want to, to, to leave your dash, who you want to impact in your journey, and what legacy you want to leave. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you, Walter. Thank you again to all of our invited guests for coming today. And congratulations once again to all of our scholar athletes and faculty members that are recognized this morning. Have a great rest of the day and go Dolphins.